So our next speaker is Claire Thomas, and she's going to give us a, uh, a patient's, her journey in thrombosis, a researcher herself. She's a patient, or she has been a patient of Dr. Aggie Lee. Um, Claire, come on up. Hello, everyone. I, uh, I don't have any slides for you today. I'll just be talking for a couple minutes. Um, I also want to acknowledge I'm not in the medical field, so I'm going to do my best to relay the medical facts with accuracy, but if I say anything that makes absolutely no sense, um, somebody come up to me later and we'll see if uh, me and Dr. Lai can figure it out. <laughs> um, so about three years ago, peak pandemic time, September 2020, um, I was walking through the UBC campus um, the nest, if any of you are, guys are students there, you might be familiar with the building. I suddenly got a very strange feeling um, where sound kind of faded out. I got really dizzy and I was having a hard time breathing and I felt like I was going to pass out. I just sort of sat on the ground for a few minutes and was like, what is going on? About 10 minutes went by and it went away. So I went home, uh, not thinking too much of it. You know, I kind of figured if it stopped and I'm better, there's no reason to spend 17 hours in the ER trying to figure out what went wrong. So, um, but unfortunately the next morning around 4.30 or 5 a.m., uh, I got up to use the washroom, spilled some water, bent down to clean it up, and as I was walking back, I was like, oh, I'm not, I'm not gonna make it back to the bed. Uh, I just, I don't know, I passed out, I woke up on the floor, I don't know how long time went by, um, but it was pretty awful. I couldn't breathe, um, I was very dizzy, I was very weak, I was in a lot of pain, I was very scared. Um, over the next 30 minutes or so, I managed to get myself to my bed and call the person I was living with at the time, a roommate. Um, and he's an early riser, so I got lucky. About 30 minutes after that, he managed to pick up my phone call and get an ambulance uh, to the house. I was brought to the hospital and told I had a mid to high risk pulmonary embolism. Um, it was attributed to uh, being on birth control. I don't actually know at what point that was sort of explored, but. Uh, I was put on heparin and about two days later I was sent home. Uh, I had terrible back pain uh, sleeping that night and I was just really not doing too well. Uh, and then the next morning I was sitting down eating breakfast and I realized I couldn't stand up, like I couldn't put any weight on my leg. Um, and it was really swollen and so I went back to the hospital and they were like, oh, you have a DVT. Um, and so it was uh, very painful. Um, doctors that uh, worked, that I worked with, most of the hematology department of UGH, um, we referred to it as the leg um, because no one was allowed to touch it except for me. It was like even if you just put a sheet over top of it, it was like an excruciating pain. And I always told myself I would never be that person that would be the screaming person in the ER. I'm like, get yourself together. That's not going to be you. And I was definitely wailing like a like a baby through, through most of that experience. Um, but uh, I was readmitted. Throughout the next week, they tried a number of things. I think we did a surgery trying to localize the, uh, with clot busting TPP, um, if that's even the right name for the medication, I'm not sure. Um, and it was unsuccessful. We couldn't really figure out what was going on. Um, about a week later, I took a shower, and as I was coming uh, out of the bathroom, I remember very audibly saying, oh no. Um, and then it happened again. Sound faded out, uh, and I just totally lost consciousness. Um, from what I'm told, uh, I went into cardiac arrest. It was pretty nasty. Um, I had a hit, which was, is very uh, topical considering the great talk that we just heard. Um, so it was uh, pretty nasty. I had like a 45 centimeter clot in my leg or something like that, and then also clot in my abdomen. And it was, it was, uh, it was pretty terrible. But um, once we figured that out, we were able to sort of put me on a IVIG. I think is the name of the medication. The anti-allergic reaction. And um, over the next about three weeks was just a lot of uh, you know me harassing the nurses, trying to get my D-dimer levels um, numbers so that I could know where I was at. Uh, I was on a unique regimen of rivaroxaban and dabigatran to try to bring everything down. Um, and I was discharged about three weeks later. Um, so about a month total in the hospital. Um, it was uh, a very strange experience to be there during the pandemic when you couldn't really have a ton of visitors and yeah, it was, it was, not, it was not a great time. Um, but, uh, and then, you know, since then, I had, I've had some problems as well. I, 
uh, continue to have these sort of episodes where I'll get really short of breath, really dizzy, and then it sort of feels like there's an elastic band being wrapped around my brain. And they've kind of been carting me around to different specialists. Everyone's really trying their best to figure out what's going on. Nobody has any answers. So if anybody here has any plans, I'm your girl. I'll be at the banquet tonight. Hit me up. Um, <laughs> but uh, until then, um, you know, it's just been sort of a matter of trying to take my health, uh, take care of my health best I can. Um, I was recently diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. I still struggle with uh, anemia and hypothyroidism and whatever other rap sheet stuff you want to you want to put on there um, but uh, that being said um, I think I can attribute basically all of everything that's happened uh, to the great medical care that I got from the hematology department the vascular surgery department the ER department every day of VGH just really took care of me in a great way and um, you know when I was discharged about three years ago I only could climb maybe two flights of stairs and then I felt like I was going to faint. Um, but last week I climbed a 30 floor building, like did like 60 flights of stairs. So things are still turning up. Things are going well. Um, so I'm really grateful to be here. Um, and I know that I wouldn't, you know, life's been hard since all of this happened, but it's a life that I have. It's a life I'm very grateful for. It's a great life and a one I probably wouldn't have without the work everybody here is doing. So I'm really grateful to be here, and uh, if there's anything I can offer, please let me know. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody have any questions or prayer? Or... It's okay if you don't. We don't. <laughs> well, we really want to thank you for coming here.